Hello, so in this video we are going to look at complex metric titrations which is part of the research and chemistry unit in the advanced higher chemistry course. Now <laughs> you would have done redox titrations uh, at a higher level and acid base titrations at national 5 level and a titration at the end of the day is just a titration, it's a technique that's used to determine the concentration of an unknown substance. Now, Complex metric titrations are good for calculating the concentration of any metal ions in a solution and in order to do them you tend to use this chemical called EDTA, so ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. It's a really long-winded name but everyone just calls it EDTA so I wouldn't worry about being able to say the whole, whole Sunday name. So EDTA is, um, if you've done the inorganic unit already you'll have done a bit on inorganic uh, metal ion complexes but basically EDTA is what's referred to as a hexadentate ligand so it's a non-metal um, molecule that has the potential to form six bonds with a metal ion uh, and yeah so if you've done the inorganic unit already you'll, that stuff will be familiar to you but if you haven't, then that'll all be a bit new and won't really make that sense at the moment. Basically, it just means it can form six bonds. Hexa means six. Denta is like teeth, so it's like um, like the dentist. Uh, so it has six teeth that it can clamp onto the metal ion with. So I'm going to put um, next a uh, screenshot of a question on a complex metric titration and then I'm going to work through the calculation with you. In terms of the practical side of this, um, it's the same as most other titrations so it requires an indicator. Um, you would repeat the titration until you obtain a concordant result and all the normal titration procedures like reading the burette from the bottom of the meniscus, rinsing the burette through the solution um, before you filled it up everything like that, using a white tile, all that still applies, it's all still relevant in order to get um, accurate and precise results. Okay, so we're going to look at the calculation now. Okay, so the question is asking for the concentration of nickel in the hydrated nickel sulphate solution. Now, I've kind of taken out the important information from the question here just because my board's not big enough to have the whole thing on it. So uh, you need the volume of EDT that was added, so you're not really interested in the burette readings for the calculations, that's just uh, taken as part of the raw results. So I've just copied down that last column in the table. Um, from the paragraph at the top, it's important to note that the whole solution that was initially made up was originally 100 centimetres cubed, then 20 centimetre cubed samples were, were titrated, so that's important when we get towards the end of the calculation. And then the concentration of the EDTA, you need that, and then in advance higher, if you've not done any practical yet, uh, you tend to do what's called weighing by difference. So you would measure out the mass of the chemical you need in a weighing boat, write down the total mass of the substance plus the weighing bolt, which is what I've called M1 here, and then you transfer that into the volumetric flask to make your solution, and then you re-weigh the empty weighing bolt. So that's just in case you've not transferred all of the substance into your solution that you're making up. So when it comes to needing to work out how much nickel sulphate was dissolved, then you would um, take the masses away from each other to find out how much actually was transferred. So that's what we call weighing by difference. So they are needed as well. So um, the first things first, and there's different ways to lay these out. This is just how I like to lay out titration calculations. So we're titrating uh, with EDTA and we're trying to find out the concentration of the nickel. Can't spell. Okay. And basically any of the titrations with EDT will generally always have a one-to-one -one ratio. So I like to write the ratio between the two substances in the middle. 
Um, basically, every calculation in chemistry requires you to calculate number of moles. So, because we're dealing with solutions here, the relationship, of, the molar relationship we'll be using will be N V C first of all. So, N equals V equals and C equals. Okay, and I'll just write N equals under here. Uh, v equals. We're not actually trying to find the concentration, but I'll just write it anyway. So, uh, now we look at the information we've been given to see which of these variables we can actually assign a, a value to. So, if we look at the EDTA, because that's what we're titrating with, so that's our standard solution, the volume uh, is going to come from the results table. Now, you need to remember that you always ignore the first titration because that's the rough, so that's never taken into account. And the only results you'll then use will be your concordant ones, so those are the ones that are within 0 0.2 centimetres cubed. So the two concordant results are these two. So you take the average of those, which means the volume of EDTA will be 18.15 centimetres cubed. And then what you have to remember is that you need to convert that into litres because the concentration of the EDTA, oh, I missed an L there, is in moles per litre. So that means that ends up as 0 0.0. 0, 1, oh, no, let's rewrite it. So the average volume would be 18.5 centimetres, eh, sorry. So the average volume of EDTA that was added from the concordant results would be 18.15 centimetres cubed, but we need that in litres. So if we divide that by 1,000, that'll be 0. 0.0. 1815 litres. And we need it in litres because the concentration of EDTA is in moles per litre. So again, I'll put, just as we're on the concentration, I'll copy that down underneath the EDTA as well. So 0 0.112 moles per litre. And then for the nickel, the only thing we actually really know is the volume of the sample. Now, when you start the calculation for the titration, it's important that you're using the, the sample volume, okay, not the total solution volume. So this one here. So that would be 0 0.02 litres. Yeah, 20 centimetres cubed. So what we can see so far is that the only thing we can actually calculate here is the number of moles of EDTA. So uh, N equals B times C. So let's put that into the calculator. Okay, so that gives you 2.0328 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, and then I'll just write that again up here. Okay. It's important that you show you're working for this stuff because um, if you just accidentally write down the wrong number, you can still pick up marks for showing that you know how to calculate these things. So because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, that means if we had this many moles of EDTA, we would have had the same number of moles of nickel. So 2.0328 times 10 to the negative three. Okay, so that means if we were trying to co calculate the concentration, we would just do, then do N over V, but we're trying to work out the percentage of nickel. So what we need to actually do is convert that into a mass because the amount of nickel sulfate that we used is in a mass. Um, so the next bit, this is how many moles are in 20 centimetres cubed. Okay, but we actually are wanting to know how much was in the whole solution. So this is where we need to scale up. So uh, in moles in 20 centimetres cubed was 2.0328 times 10 to the minus 3. So then that means that the number of moles in 100 centimetres cubed is that times 5, because if you times 20 by 5, you get 100. Okay, that gives you 0 0.010164 moles. Okay, so that's how many moles 
are in the whole solution. So now if we take that number of moles and convert it into a mass, M equals M times GFM. So 0 0.0106. Okay, so that's the number of moles and then you're going to multiply that by the gram formula mass of nickel because it's this is the moles of nickel that we've ca calculated. So the gram formula mass of nickel, if you look up the data booklet, is 58.7. Okay, so if you put that in your calculator. So that comes out as 0 0.5. Five nine six six grams. Okay, now so that's the mass of nickel that was present, but it's wanting the percentage. So all we have to do is a basic percentage calculation to work out how much of the total mass of the nickel hydrated nickel sulfate was actually just made up of nickel. So for that, I just Rub this bit out here. So, percentage of nickel to the positive would be the mass that you found to be in it divided by the total mass of nickel sulfate. So, that's where we now need to take these away from each other. There was actually 2.604 grams of nickel sulfate added initially, so that goes under there. And then to convert that into a percentage, you would just times by 100. So if I take that in, okay, and that comes out as 22.9%, and you can round that to 23% if you want to. Okay, um, one thing I would you can actually round the numbers at any point as long as your rounding is correct. However, I would encourage you to try and avoid rounding as much as possible, um, at least above three significant figures until you get to the end of the calculation. Okay, so it is quite similar to the titration calculations you've done before. However, it's the percentage bit at the end that's probably the new bit. Scaling up, you would have probably done in some redox calculations um, and higher. Okay, so you always start off calculating the number of moles that the titration results give you. Scale up the solution if to the total volume of the solution if required. Convert the number of moles into a mass. And then you use just a general percentage calculation to work out then what percentage of the metal ion was in the solution.